what about the small creators that's hating on, like myself, right? Yep. I'll be hating on the, because I just learned this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hating. That's hating on the people who are enjoying the fruits of their labor from their prior career. Let's say a Shannon Sharp, even a Joe Button, a, yeah. a Gillian Wallow, a Cameron Mace. You see the smaller careers like, man, you guys had a career before this. It's easy for you. But really, they really oh, just reaping the benefit of the hard work that they already put in. But that even that's bull. Like Shannon Sharp was a football player. That has nothing to do with what he's doing now. I he has to this. get up and put in time, energy, and effort into this new venture he's in. If anything, I have more respect for him now that he had a career in football and could easily disappear and just enjoy his life not mm. doing this. Or at least that's, and that I shouldn't even do that because that's assuming. The, the point is, he's putting in work to do another project that takes effort. Mm -hmm. Joe is putting in the time, day in and day out, works harder than anyone else I know, to make the show the greatest show in the world. So people who, who point the fingers, that's insecurity speaking. Mm -hmm. That's not genuine. That's their, their mind taking over going, I'm jealous of what I see. I don't want to put in that work. So I'm going to point at what I think uh, knocks them off their, you know, their rocker. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Oh, man, this is special. As you, as you can see, I'm not in the studio. I'm actually in New York City. So if you hear some, some police sirens, it's a part of the culture. It's a part of the city. That's what we're doing, right? I'm in the hotel room. Yeah. It's a small hotel room. It ain't um like a suite. So don't think because you see a lot of space, it's a suite. Nah, because we be making shit happen. We put the bids up in here. So I, I need you guys to understand, man. We took it back. I got a special guest in the building, somebody that I wanted to talk to for a very long time. And I'm going to tell you why soon. Mr. Ian Schwartzman is in the building. Manager. Manager. Executive producer. Executive producer. Investor. Investor. And I want to call you a part-time creator now. Ooh. Welcome to the Creators Club. Part time, part time, part time. Oh, full time. Because what okay. is a creator? Interesting question. Somebody who takes the time to make something they see in their head and then materialize it. So it don't have to be on camera. Absolutely not. It doesn't have to be on audio or microphone or nothing. Absolutely not. What about painters? Mm. Photographers? This is true. They're creators. They bring us something to life. So I would say... Absolutely. Full-time creator. I create things. You do. Both that I'm visually in and some things that I'm not visually in at all. What's your proudest creation? Ooh. I have to think about that. Mm. My proudest... Everything I put my mind to, that I commit to, I'm proud of equally. I mean that, too. I know that could sound corny, but the truth is, if I commit to doing something, it's because I have I have something racing through my head that I feel like needs to come to life. Mm -hmm. And so once I can materialize it, I'm proud of it. And, okay. and everything that I touch, I'm proud of. A lot of shit fails. Some of the stuff is successful. <laughs> some people notice some of the stuff I do. A lot of people have no idea the the creations i've made but that's kind of the the way it works sheesh you have any kids i don't yet okay okay you just dived into a whole different conversation i wasn't ready for yet okay about just having a lot of the creations that you've done that people don't even know about that that goes to absolutely shit, right and it reminds me of like the 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 music business as far as like record labels absolutely people don't understand like they hire maybe hundreds and hundreds of artists, but you see the one that popped, that's the one that's paying the bills, kind of. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. So it reminded me of that. But, but before we get there, okay. Um, before we get into all of the business um, talk and everything, who are you? 
Ian Schwartzman. Who 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 is that? On a personal level, what's the first name that come to mind? Who, uh, driven, hungry, motivated to do things that are felt and and affect the world. Mm. Um, I have a drive to to do special things. Mm. I'm hardworking. Um, I like to feel inspired. If I'm inspired, I'm I'm going to do everything I can to bring something to life. If I'm not, I'm going to walk away from it. I think that's who I am in a nutshell. No, I, I asked that question because um, I feel like, like more recently people have been asking me that. And I feel like everything I am is something that you can't see on camera. Everything, I, well, you can if I chose to show you, right? Right. Everything I am is 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 outside of the media and workspace. This is work, right? It's fun, but it's work. And I feel like sometimes in this space, it's so easy to get for you to lose who you actually are because Ooh. you're pretending to be somebody else to get to a place where you can be yourself. But by the time you get there, you already lost it. That's interesting. I agree with you. I think the entertainment industry has a dark cloud over it. It makes you feel like if you don't pretend to be something you're not, you won't be anything at all. Mm. And it's untrue. I think um, the biggest success stories are when you can be comfortable enough to be yourself and then people are gravitating towards who you really are. Because then you're not putting on a show anymore. And now you're just being genuinely you. That's a fact. But in today's society, even in the industry, it, I feel like it makes it so hard to be yourself because everyone has an opinion. I mean, the internet is a is, is a is a powerful place, both yeah. good and bad. True. Right? So if you are a slimy individual, yes. We gonna it's gonna expose that. It could. Mm. People have good masks sometimes. Especially in this business. That's true. So I think, yeah, a lot of th a lot of things come to light. And then depending on who you're around, there's things that don't ever see daylight. And those people can continue to be slimy. Mm. So who you surround yourself with determines who you end up like. Do you think that when, when you hear the word genuine, what's the first thing that comes to mind? <sighs> Unapologetically being yourself, even if it's abrasive to someone else. That's good. You know, like just you, you're able to be you, even if it rubs people around you the wrong way. Mm. That's what genuine means. You know why you're here? No idea. Well, I shouldn't. I have an idea, but I don't. You have to tell me why. You're, you know, it's your show. You were here because I wanted to pick your brain. I feel like you are behind probably one of the biggest, um, I don't want to say cultivation, in, that we've ever seen in this space. Okay. It's easy to look past you mm -hmm. to the talent. Not saying that, let's clear the room. You're Joe Button's manager. Yes. It's easy to look past you and to look at what came about through you and with you, Joe Button. Sure. Right? But well, well, Joe Budden is Joe Budden before me. Facts, regardless and of the podcast, hundred percent. Okay, but if you're smart, you understand the collaboration. Absolutely, right? Or maybe you don't understand it, but that's why we're here. If you're smart, you understand. Okay, if you if you're smart, <laughs> I don't know why it's happening, but you got it. You got yeah, it. yeah. If, if you're smart, you understand there's collaboration in most great creations, mm -hmm. most great entities and empires that are built mm -hmm. there is collaboration inside so sure and this is why i wanted to talk to you because okay. at first glance it's easy to say yo let's let's connect the dots i want to get close to joe as possible right mm -hmm. but i don't think and i'm gonna be honest i feel like once you have so a certain level of success it's hard to it's hard to remember these times not saying you don't okay but who better to talk to than the mm -hmm. person that's been there doing the business, then helping doing the business the entire time. Right. Me personally. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I, um, I I wanted to bring you on because, again, it's genuinely for you because I know that you can teach us, the people that's creating, people are like me, sure. so many things. I appreciate that. Nah. I feel like I could 
pass along knowledge that can help a lot of people too. And I, but I ask that in connection with the genuine question because coming up in my community, in my environment, I always thought being genuine was a good person. So I would think me bring you up because my intentions are good, I'm genuine. And that got me in a lot of trouble in the industry for my short term. I can see I can see why. <laughs> Cause I thought genuine, but you can genuinely be a slimy person. Or you could genuinely be an asshole to people who don't deserve an opportunity. My point is that exactly. you don't have to be an asshole. My point is that exactly. but it could be perceived as you're being an asshole because you're not lifting people up with you as you rise. Mm. That still makes you genuine. Facts. It doesn't make you a bad person, but if your goal is to elevate, sometimes you can't bring everyone with you. So the way you came up, that would be perceived as you're not genuine. But the truth is, for you to help anyone else, you have to help yourself first. Mm. I mean, we know that. We get on an airplane and say, put your mask on first if everything is happen, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, let's get into it. Okay. I thought we got into it already. Oh, my mic. Yeah, take, take a second. It's all good. My bad, my bad, my bad. That's because he made you put the mic on the outside. Now you have problems. <laughs> right. It's, 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 it's ingenuine. This is, this is not genuine. <laughs> what is it? To what disingenuous? I wanted, disingenuous. Disingenuous to what I wanted to do. But <laughs> thank you. I wanted the mic inside. Your team's making you put it outside the shirt. Well, hey, they know what's best. But they, they know see. what's best for you. They can see. See, there we go with the team. That's you have important. them around for a reason, right? You got to listen to them. Facts. That's why I listen. Or at least hear them out and then disagree. Oh, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. All right, it's better to listen. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, if your lady's on go, but your meat got a fro. <laughs> yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, don't use the clip as you use on your face or on the head below your waist. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, fellas, you want that jumper like Steph Curry? But your nuts is fairy? <laughs> but nah, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use promo code JHill for 20% off. They're going to give you a, the, the man bag. You know what I'm saying? When you're traveling, put all your grooming needs in the man bag. You don't got to carry it in your book bag. You don't got to be all over the place. You feel what I'm saying? They got the nose trimmer. Listen, man, some of y'all nose is disgusting out here. Get you a nose trimmer. For real. It shit is disgusting. Some ball deodorant for when you out and about. You about to get it on. Put that ball deodorant on. Smell fresh. Brand new. And of course, the lawnmower 5. Make sure you holler at my guys at Manscaped. J-Hill promo code. J-Hill, one word. 20% off and free shipping. How are you able to have discernment when it comes to dealing with certain people? Because you, it's eat. I'm pretty sure you probably get a lot of people who try to Get in contact with Joe through you. Absolutely. It's just staying in the genuine conversation. Um, everything, everybody isn't meant to be close to what we're doing. Mm. So just because they reach out doesn't entitle them to get close. Mm. I use uh, my better judgment to determine what needs to get close and what doesn't. And I think Joe and I have a close enough relationship where he trusts my judgment and I trust his judgment and we allow each other to do our jobs so that we could stay focused and on the path we, we plan to be on. I mean, yes, people try to get close and there are some people that do because they deserve to be close and they have something they're bringing to the table that may not even benefit us, but that I feel like is important to be around Joe, then I'll fast track that request to get to Joe. But if you're just coming around to cling on and waste our time, then yeah, I do everything in my power to keep you away. I'm, I'm just trying, I'm trying to um, understand something before you was his manager. How long did y'all know each other? Um, Joe and I were meeting for about three to four months before um, I started officially managing him. And Parks on the podcast, he was the one who approached me and told me, hey, Joe's looking for a new manager. Because Parks and I have worked together for years already. I manage DJ Premier too. Mm -hmm. And DJ Premier um, has had Parks as his engineer. engineer yeah. So while I was managing Premier, 
things were going well, and Parks is like, I know Joe's looking for a manager. I think you'd be great with him. Um, and we had a private conversation, and then he connected the dots for us to start meeting and, and seeing if we'd be interested in working together. So I would say there was a couple of months where we were back and forth. I was touring with Premier, uh, and it, things weren't official between Joe and I, so we were just having conversations to see if we gelled, if our if our personalities would work together. Because to me, it's not a job. It's very much... My role is as a manager, as a, a partner, is very much relationship driven like we have to be able to communicate mm -hmm. with whoever i work with some people think it's if you're a great manager you could work with a great artist that's not true um, if you're not able to communicate effectively with the people you work with you may as well not get started so i spent those first few months before we were officially working together to feel out what kind of person he was what his goals were um, what he was looking to achieve and to reverse engineer in my head, am I able to add value to this situation before I made any real commitment? But where were you at in your career at that moment before you decided to to move forward? Were I, you would, would you say you were successful? Yeah, I was. I yeah, I was successful before Joe. Okay, so in that moment, being successful as a manager in your career, yeah. right? What made you take that leap? To because I feel like at that moment, yeah. Joe had a lot going on. Absolutely. What made you say, yeah, I want to do this with this guy? His honesty. Joe Joe has this ability to be vulnerable um, and not put up this facade. This facade of like, I'm greater than all. I'm this artist. I'm this, this celebrity. Um, he was very transparent with me that he wanted change in his career. And that what he was doing wasn't working. Mm. And that made me feel like, oh, this is this is a good situation because he's not he's not entering the relationship acting like he knows it all. He's actually doing the opposite. Humble. He, he's humble. And he was like, what I'm doing isn't working for me. Mm. So I want someone who can come in and show me a different way so that I could achieve some of the things that I see a part of my future and and that was more attractive to me than anybody that has a built-in machine and just needs someone to come in and plug deals in place i was up for the challenge oh but you had to see something though right oh absolutely in the midst of so much chaoticness yep. and craziness that could be going around an individual yep. what did you see in him yep Again, okay. <laughs> that make you say, of course, but besides being humble, yeah. that, that's what make you like him, right? Yeah, absolutely. But were you able to see this yes, then? Yes, absolutely. I, well, I'll tell you this. Um, before I got started with Joe, I, I've always been a diehard Howard Stern fan. Mm -hmm. So I'm a broadcast junkie for that type of media. And something that always drew me to Joe was his stint on reality TV and just how open he was to the world about whatever was going on in his life. Mm. And I just remember him being such a lovable person and, and so polarizing. Like he wasn't playing some game for the, the cameras. And I remember his WBLS stint. He was a radio host. Yeah. And everything he did between radio and reality TV was attractive to me. I wasn't even the biggest fan of his music, if I'm being honest. He knows this. I was a fan of his personality. Mm. I always thought his stardom was going to be biggest on TV and broadcast. And so that's what I saw in him. I always looked at him like um, an even stronger version of Howard Stern for hip-hop and for music and for the culture that I was involved in. So it, it wasn't me meeting him that, that attracted me to working with him. It was me knowing what I liked about him, hit the qualities that I was attracted to him. And then that conversation and the conversations that came after that, that let me know that, okay, what I see can see him doing in a big way mixed with, the attitude he has and the vulnerability 
and his ability to to say, okay, I want to do things differently. All those things together was the perfect cocktail of ingredients that you need to find success. Mm. So that's what I saw in Joe. I mean, do you think, because like we say about the team, sometimes you got to listen to your team, absolutely. even when you don't agree. Do you think he saw it like you saw it at that time? He he didn't know me well enough to know how I was going to treat the whole situation. I th- genuinely believe he knew he needed a team that could help guide him in a much different direction. Not the team, though. Do you think he saw this? I think then? he listened to Parks. I think he heard Parks when Parks probably went to him privately. I wasn't there. And and probably went to bat for the way he saw me changing things for DJ Premier at the time. But no, not even the management and the relationship. Okay. What are you referring How to? How we see Joe as a superstar podcaster, pod father, right? Oh. Do you think... Do I think he saw that? Yeah. His um, face in the media then. No. I, like you saw. I, no, I don't think so. I think he saw... I think he saw an opportunity to do something different at that time. I don't think he imagined how big it is today back then. So, I think that developed over time. So as a manager mm-hmm. and you having that 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 foresight. Yep. How was the conversations to help him see something okay. that he probably couldn't even see? It had to be difficult at times. Of course. I mean those relationships are difficult because as an artist, I think a lot of artists want things now. Mm. They, they're like, oh, I, this is what I want to do now. And if, and if things don't happen quick enough, if the, the reward fa- factor isn't there quick enough, I think a lot of people give up. So for us, the conversation, I, I was always the long term. But, but think of it like this, Joe. If we do this a hundred times with YouTube, if we upload video to YouTube, if we... Um, if we distribute the audio to more places, if it gets in front of more people to hear and see what we're doing over the course of many years, it's programmatic. We're, we're going to change the way people hear and see what we're doing. And it will therefore change our business. That sometimes wasn't good enough for him. But I know in hindsight now, he appreciates those conversations we had. It was a lot of, we have to think long term. This isn't going to happen overnight. I ask that because just the manage. I'm trying to paint a picture of the manager artist dynamic, oh, the dynamic, right? Yeah. And you say a lot of times people quit, and I'm wondering mm-hmm. who would you say quit the most? Is it the management for the artist because it's too difficult, or is it the artist to the management because they think Ooh. the manager don't think they know what they're doing? That's a good question. <sighs> I think what I think managers quit too quick because they don't see a check. Mm. And I think artists quit too fast when they don't see the results that they want. Mm. And both of those things together make usually make a relationship between manager and artist and way before the fruits of their labor come to life. Mm -hmm. So it's not one or the other. It's usually the impatience of both parties. Managers are traditionally speaking are so money hungry Mm. and they're, they're, they're trained to think that if you're not making money with your artists now, forget it. It's never going to happen. No one has any work ethic anymore. No one wants to put in time. Everyone thinks the whole trip is supposed to be up, up, no one's no, no one's on for the journey when things go like this to go okay it's it's down right now mm-hmm. what can we do to build it back up or the other side and I'm being transparent cuz like yeah. when I had management okay sometimes right if it's yeah. not about money it could be okay if it's not about the money and my client isn't list I feel my client isn't listening to me then where's the value in that and I think it's kind of like, when I think of that, I think of like a relationship, a long-term relationship. Yeah. Because I'm married, right? I'm um, married too. You're yeah, married. I'm married. And in marriage, 
things don't always go how it's planned, like how you want it to go, right? right? But through your covenant and in your marriage, you have to stick it out and fight through and find a way. Absolutely, man. But when you, I'm assuming if I'm signing paper with you and we talk about money, we talk about you thinking long term. Yeah. I'm assuming it should be the, the the same way. But because we aren't married, right, or having that sexual chemistry, yeah. we don't we don't see the value in keeping that. When I feel like you're not listening to me, or I'm not getting the money. That's a really good point. I will tell you this, Joe and I have had so much success because we're able to function like a real relationship. Mm -hmm. There are times he doesn't agree with me and there are times I don't agree with him, but I have to do my best to understand where he's coming from and realize just because this isn't working doesn't mean the overall relationship isn't working. And I know he does the same thing. This is a journey, man. Like when you sign up for the the type of relationship that is artist manager, don't get into it if you're not thinking long term. Don't get into it if it's not if it's not meant to be the trip. And I mean that broad stroke like if you're not in it for the whole ride, don't start it. That's interesting. What did you guys ever have to like fall back and be like, "Man, the friendship is more important than the business?" No, because it was always both. Because it's business before friendship. Wow. For Joe and I. Our friendship developed because of because of let's go back to your word, genuine. Because we're genuine with each other. Mm. We have some some conversations that maybe aren't so so good to the ear, but they're needed. Mm. I respect Joe. And I know he respects me. That that's why it works. We don't always agree with each other, man. This isn't some like dictatorship. Like before, you're like, oh, if an, a manager gives advice and the artist isn't listening, everyone I every artist I work with, every client of mine, everything I say isn't just law. Law. Like yeah. I'm I'm a person. I'm I, I'm giving what my perspective is on the situation. Mm. And they have the right to disagree with me. That's crazy. Because my, my situation was like opposite as far as we was like, man, this ain't working. And I'd rather keep the friendship. But the business still goes on. That's weird. <laughs> so it's like, now it's like a... <laughs> Were you friends before business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why. Yeah. Another problem in the industry, I think, uh, that exists a lot is you hire, people hire friends before they hire the people they should really have around them. Wow. I mean, that's, it's a common mistake. It's the, it goes back to what you said initially, which was, um, I, th you said to me, I came up in a place where being genuine meant bringing everyone with you. Or well, being what, a good person. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You said being a good person is bringing that's... everyone that you care about with you. That doesn't make you a good person, in my mm. opinion. That, that means you have a big heart. But a big heart could help you drown quicker. Facts. That's a fact. That doesn't mean you're doing the right thing. It means you have a good heart. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people in our our industry work with people that they're comfortable around rather than the people they need to be around. Mm -hmm. And that's why they end up in fucked up positions. Yo, let's get into some of this business, man. You guys have probably one of the most interesting takes on like ads, mm -hmm. revenue and Patreon and okay. like we just let's say subscription in general. Okay. Subscription based content Absolutely. in general. <laughs> Although I can see the value in it. Okay. How can I ask this question? Although I can see the value in it, do you think that's for everyone? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. At first. But let me flip it on you. Let me ask you a question. Do you have Netflix? I do. Okay. Why is it okay? Why do we as people support companies like Netflix? 
But when a creator wants to treat their own content that they put their time, energy, and resources into, does the same thing, we question it and look at them funny. We don't know a fucking thing about the people at Netflix. I'm not even bad-mouthing. I love Netflix, too. But now here we are. You're a creator. You're you're making a business of content, are you not? I am. Okay. Don't you want your content value correctly? Who measures the value, though? No. I do want it value correctly. That's all. I, I, my question was, do you want it? Do you I want do. it value? I do. Okay. Because you put time into this. Yes. Okay. What something like Patreon does is allows you to value or put a value to what you believe your content is worth. Mm -hmm. Now, the choice is up to the people that follow your stuff if they want to sign up for it or they don't. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, that doesn't have to be the only destination that you put your content on as a creator. Because you're a Patreon doesn't mean you can't be on YouTube or Facebook or TikTok or Twitter or X. You could be on all those at the same time. It, it, it doesn't stop you from creating an ecosystem for your content the same way the networks do. Now, people don't like to hear me say that. The first thing they'll say is, you're just after the money. That's bullshit. You don't say that when your favorite show goes from movie theater, to streaming service, to television network, to DVD. No one says a thing. But when a creator tries to do it, you're going to get pushback. I understand that. I just think this value thing, mm -hmm. we have to be careful with this. Okay. And you have to understand who you are. Because if, if you are someone... Uh, Joe Button. I think you mentioned uh, Shannon Sharp, uh, um, Gillian Wallow, whatever. A-list celebrity, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can do that, but I think sometimes when we're having, when you guys are having this conversation, yeah, the audience is bigger than the A-list celebrity. So we're looking at it like, oh, maybe I need to do that, and I'm just, I'm looking at it like. Mm, I don't. I don't think so. Just yet. I think you have to build yourself up so you can be a Netflix. Netflix isn't just Netflix. They didn't just come. It's so many people who try but, to have streaming services. Yeah. They aren't Netflix. Yeah, but Netflix is a company that came in with a ton of funding. What I'm saying is, you could be Jay Hill, mm -hmm. and I'm not downplaying your audience, but. Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if a hundred people said, I'm going to pay you monthly to watch your content? 100%. If that was your starting point. Yeah. Because you start there. It doesn't mean you can't go from there to where Netflix is. But if you're constantly in this pattern of I'm waiting to build myself up moment, it's really just a way of saying, I am afraid it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wait till I feel like it's so big that I can do it too. That's just me get reading you. Because I think you represent also the fear of most creators. I want to represent that right now. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And I get that. I, 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 I think that there's value in that. And so I definitely understand um, everything's not for everybody. Mm. And there's value in being wide and not having a paywall. But I would be doing a disservice to creators like you and others that are either planning on making this a career or already have it as a career. Instead of chasing down a Netflix deal, make your own Netflix is my 100 point. hundred percent with that. I, Instead of waiting for that deal, make it for yourself. That's my, that's my message is that there's, there's always going to be the desire to, to be recognized by the big companies. Mm -hmm. And, and I co-sign that. I think there's, there's some value in it. It's reassurance. It's affirmation. All good. But in the world we live in today, there's, there, there's really no excuse to not get started yourself. Mm. I'm not saying make it your only path. But it's there. It's accessible to you today. And 10 years ago, it wasn't. Mm. 
So why not get started on it? So how do we, because when we talk about somebody paying for something, we have to give them value. It, ain't, it can't just be okay. There we go. some BS, right? Absolutely. How does a creator think outside the box to create that value? How was you guys able to, 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 to create the value for an audience? I mean, a wide right. audience to come through and, right. and start paying top notch. Well, re- remember, you know, for us specifically, I, I, I don't want to, always use us as the specific example because then I'm going to get hit with um, the, well, we're not you guys. Mm. So why give that as an example? That's just an easy setup to be cursed out. But you wasn't here all the time, though. No, I, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't, you didn't start here, though. Right, absolutely. So, get, so we want to know. So we want to okay. know you because we see this is the outcome of the work that's put in. Uh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But you can get there. Everyone can. So we want to know from you guys. That's what we want to know. Well, I'll give it to you from my brain. Mm -hmm. My brain says that it doesn't matter if you have a hundred people following you and listening to every show that you have, whether it's a podcast or a show or millions of people. The way to add value is to add something to the the way you release your content that is different from your normal routine. Like what? Give me an example. You are expert okay. in this. Okay, here's the example. If Jay Hill releases once a week mm-hmm. publicly to the world, mm-hmm. why can't Jay Hill release twice a week except one of those episodes is behind the paywall? Mm-hmm. And so if you like listening to Jay and you are a ritualistic listener and viewer of your content, whether it's one person or a million people, they'll want to see that second episode a week. That's true. Now, to me, that's the easiest way to put it. If I get any more complicated or <laughs> complex with it, I- I'm opening myself up to get shit on for no reason. And I- then we lose the 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 value in the information. So that's the best way to put it. When you it. say open your... Wait, I don't understand this. Like, what's the fear in opening myself up to be shit on? Like, like, what's the... It's not that I have a fear. It's that most people don't want information. They want you to give them the result that they're looking for. That's they don't want to work for nothing. Yeah. So when I'm saying this is what you would have to do, they're seeing all the, the legwork that goes into it. But and they say it's easy, it's easy It's easy. for you to say. But we're not talking to them. I mean, how do you know we're not talking to them? <laughs> this we're not talking. For, we're this, talking to everyone. This is not for them. We're talking to everyone, Jay. Facts. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. What? A, I mean, I'm curious. This, this, this is curious. On the other side of that, right? Okay. Uh, you guys have episodes that you release just for Patreon. Yep. That's never hit YouTube. That's right. What about the creator side of, or the other side of the end, where you might bring in a small time creator that can use that publicity, mm-hmm. right? But you guys put it on a paywall, and it's like all of my supporters went to pay for this, and I don't get the benefit of it being shown on the. On How the do world. you know you don't get the benefit? Do you have all those people watching your stuff? I mean, if you bringing me on, I have value. You bringing me on for a reason. Because maybe I like you. No one knows you. I'm just for the, saying for the for the people who do know, for the guests that you might have, the small that, creators. Okay, right. We don't need to say no names, but for the small creators, but not small, the medium creators that have a viewership, Mm -hmm. right? They have a good audience. They have their own audience. Why do you think they're coming on, Jay? You know why they're coming on. Then why are you asking me this question? But it's for the, no, it's for the opportunity. There you go. Of being on a bigger platform. But if you you just answered your own question. No, 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 no. If you put it on a paywall, I don't get the opportunity no more. How do you know that? Because Patreon and YouTube is wide open. You, we just seen, we just seen Shannon Sharp do fifty million views. That was Cat Williams sitting next to him. That wasn't some some random person with a few followers. It's a superstar. So we cannot compare apples to oranges because you won't get the answer you want. I hear what you're saying. There's a reason people step foot on other people's platforms. It's because they're looking to expand. Their audience. Yes. It's that simple. I'm sitting with you. There's going to be people that see this that have no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. And there will be people that see this that have no idea who you are. And that's the reason we sit together. That's an exchange of goods right there. You don't need money. It's not about that. 
So when you say, why would I come to sit behind a paywall? How do you know how many people are back there watching and listening? That's the point of coming on. If I come on your platform, is the is is, is for the is the opportunity to get to a get big exposed. audience. Okay, who says you're not? You are. You come on, it's because. So you tell me you have more views on Patreon than YouTube. That's not what I said. What I said, and I, I I won't get into specifics about anything about our business. What I will say is that don't for a second think that you're not getting exposed to an enormous amount of people by going to any one of our properties. That's a mistake to assume. That's all. Mm. That's an assumption. You're assuming things. Okay. And, and it's because a lot of times the, the assumptions happen because uh, a lot of times the assumptions are happening because they can't imagine having that type of setup for their own show. And they look at what their peers have behind paywall and they go, oh, that ain't shit. It's not YouTube. Where do we draw the line between... The value, and, 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 and I don't want to make this a money thing. It's not a money it's thing. A money but a lot thing. of times we are, as creatives, and I'm trying, not trying to make excuses as well, but a lot of times as creatives, we're doing this on YouTube because we have an opportunity to get the maximum exposure, right? I where respect we, that very much. Where do we draw much. that line? For example, you said, mm -hmm. you tweeted, um, imagine if, for lack of better words, imagine if that Cat Williams interview was behind a paywall. But it's like, man, I need this. If, if I can get this to do 50 now I might can get a deal from a company yeah. worth a hundred million dollars. Well, first I will say that the first few lines of what I tweeted were, "What an incredible achievement oh, that yeah, for sure. that Cat and Shannon had such an amazing and enormous interview that got in the first weekend twenty five to thirty million views. It's something." No one's done before. I ain't trying to shade you though. No, no, I don't. I ain't trying to shade you. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't think you are. My, I don't think you are. Yeah. But um, it wasn't stepping on it. It was acknowledging that there are other methods that could have been included in a rollout, not his rollout, not that it's opportunity. Example, it's yeah, just yeah. an example, yeah. and so. You know, I I just find so many times. People are dependent on whatever they're most knowledgeable or comfortable on instead of looking for ways to increase the value of what they're building. Mm. And I think paywall is something we're trained to do as the consumer for every other company out there. Why the fuck aren't we including it in our workflow as the creator and business side of what we're publishing? Why is it we're willing to pay these big companies, but when it comes to the content that we're creating internally with our teams, we're scared to use the same tools and resources to build that kind of model for our own businesses? I think that's, that's insecurity and fear that needs to be challenged mm. on our side. And I say our, I mean from the independent creator side. We deserve it. You deserve it. It but you sense. have to take those steps. That's a fact. I th and I think, like we said earlier, sometimes impatient people give up. One of my friends that d does a show, uh, they started out trying the app thing. And the app thing just wasn't working. Matter of fact, shout out to my guys, Ty and, uh, damn, and Ryan. They does they do um, Hartley Initiated Podcast, okay. right? So it's funny, like, because maybe not even a year ago, we are all having this meeting, yeah. and they're trying to do the subscription base kind of like tonight's, con tonight's conversation, right? But it wasn't working for them. I have a question before you go any further. Go ahead. Were they also using the YouTube's, Instagram's? No, they were just doing. Okay. Well, see, to me, I'm not saying use one or the other. You're saying both. I'm just saying incorporate as many techniques as you can mm. to empower your own business. I'm not suggesting that anybody should just use Patreon and only Patreon. Mm. That may not be best for your business. I'm also not suggesting you should just use YouTube and Spotify. I think the way you learn what works best is by going more wide, studying the information that you get based on your releases over time, and then chipping away and customizing to make it work for what your goals are. 
Okay, I like that. Let's get into some more advice for creatives, though. Okay, advice. you guys don't are not really big on advertising. Advertising. Correct me. What? I think we're. I think the better way to put it is we are selective. Okay, very selective. Of course. <laughs> okay, but of course, in that it almost comes off as unapproachable, like. We don't want to who ad advertisers. Who does it come off unapproachable? It to? seems like who does it come off unapproachable? To? When I watch, it's like, man, this nigga don't do advertisement. I want to get to that point. No, you don't. Because the second that we would do it like everyone else, you'd be doing what every other fan that listens to other podcasts does. They go like this. Where's the stop button on this? You know why? Because it's fucking annoying. It is. It is. No, no, I'm saying I would want to get to where you guys are at because like you don't. You promote it like you don't need it. Of course, you probably don't it's, need it. It's it's not about um, need. It's about understanding where the value is in this broadcast business. It's in the audience. So if you turn away the audience, for whatever the reason is, you start disrupting the experience because you're throwing 100 ads into an episode or your content's not interesting. Or you're a broke podcaster and you're trying to get some money and you have an audience and people are If you're a broke podcaster, us. more than likely you're not getting advertising anyway. So who gives a shit? That's not necessarily true. There's a lot of creators out here who have a lot of views that's yeah. broke. So they use... How do you know their real views? And what does views mean? See, and that's where we have a problem. Just because you get views doesn't mean you have value to your show. That's true. Pe people... That's the the issue I have with people being so overly committed to vanity metrics. Metrics. Yeah, I mean metrics are important, but actual measurable engagement. Like, do people do, does the audience react or move when you ask them to? Mm. That's valuable. Just because you can get some views on a video does not mean the audience is going to follow you to your next endeavor. That's a fact. And I think there's a, a there's a, a misconception that a lot of views means a lot of value. Because these companies are paying us for the views. That's what you think. Of course they want They're to. they're paying for impression, yes. They're paying for visibility and awareness, yes. That's a piece of what they pay for. Mm -hmm. And the sales, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. But it starts with the views. They they won't even give you a if I have eight hundred views. What about your listens? Yeah, and, and the listens, of, of course. Okay. If I have 800 li uh, views and mm -hmm. 2,000 listens, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to even get somebody to notice me. But out of that 500 views and, and two th or 800 views and 2,000 listens, I could have 50 people coming and purchasing with me. But they won't even give me a chance because it doesn't look good. It, they look at it from face value. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not giving this guy a chance. Let me give you another scenario real quick. Let's just say you have every episode, you have a thousand views and 800 listens. But every one of those thousand views and 800 listens are f located in Towson, Maryland. Mm. And you know that those listeners and viewers are in Towson, Maryland. And you go to the local pizza chain in Towson, Maryland, and you say, every single episode that I release once a week, a thousand people from this town are watching and listening. I want you to sponsor my episode, the next five episodes. And I can guarantee you that these are a thousand people that you could add to your business. Mm. There will be a sponsor from that local business, that pizzeria. Mm. That will be somebody who will be willing to sponsor you. You don't need a million views. You need information. If you have the information... You could do a lot with it. Jeez, how do you get the information? You distribute your podcast, right? Me? I mean, you distribute your oh, show, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You get the information from the dashboards that allow you to see it. So if you're distributing your show, your content, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook... There's back-end dashboards that show you where your viewership and listenership is. It may not Do be so geo-targeted to where 
you're you're seeing where they live. Or, okay, it's not as specific as that, but it's rich enough to give you an idea of where people are tuning in. So, what's the most important? We talking about numbers, measure. Analy- yeah. What's the most important measure? There isn't one. There, there's you know, whatever. There's a handful: age, demographic, um, gender, location. And frequency of listening or, mm. or viewing. I mean, to me, it's all of those things kind of mixed together. And, you know, all of those different elements give you uh, uh, an overall understanding of who's listening and watching. That's the important thing. It's once you understand it, you could take the, the data points. It's boring stuff. But if you could take it and paint a picture, like I just said. You, you made something sound really depressing. I have a 1,000 <laughs> viewers and 800 listeners. I flipped it and made it sound valuable because mm. it is to somebody. Mm. Now, Coca-Cola may not come to you yeah, with a 1,000 viewers. But McDonald's doesn't give a shit about you. Yeah. But if you understand where these people are and then you go, okay, let me, let me go knock on these 10 doors because it makes sense for these 10 different companies to advertise with me you could adv- you could make it have value to it and i think that's that's what's important it's but, not about all the views because most people can't do what shannon sharp and cat williams did that's an anomaly that's a fact but a lot of people could get on here and i think we'll see it a lot more and stay consistent and figure out how to find an audience mm. And not many people are going to end up like the Joe Budden podcast. But it doesn't mean you're not going to be successful or can't be successful. That's a fact. So No, I think I agree. It's like uh, we were talking about music artists. Um, mm-hmm. Not everybody is Jay-Z. Or will be. But it's a lot of artists out here who you don't know their name. They're supporting their family with their music. Absolutely, man. But do you want? are you okay with being that person? There you go. It's an ego thing. Yeah. See, I... I I think there's something really special about being able to pay a bill or bills doing something you love. Thank God for that. Just one bill. Imagine, I said this the other day, I don't. I said it somewhere online, but I said something like, if you could take care of one of your bills, um, doing what you love, whether it be making music, creating content, um, drawing, Whatever your craft is, who knows what it is. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be an entertainment business. But doing something you love, mm-hmm. would that change your mind about committing to it more, putting more time into it? I think most people quit at, at these, these um, ventures because they don't see a dollar fast enough, so they go, oh, it's never going to happen. He's so true. It's so true. I think even talking about seeing the value, you don't see the value in yourself. I had to trick myself, not even trick, but just yeah. You do have to trick yourself. That's I have a healthy to thing. By sit the way. down and have a hard conversation with myself multiple times to say, "Bro, you are not these people yet, anyway." Mm-hmm. But look where you are today. <laughs> yep. From where you were yesterday. There you go. Like, I, I, I'm gonna be completely honest. I have Some sick ass conversations <laughs> you have to have with yourself, right? <laughs> like, it's I so easy because you're looking at again. You're looking at where people are today yes and you're measuring it to your success and harrison's a thief bro. right so it's like and you gotta tell yourself it's like man look bro i got eighty thousand subscribers man i was just at 20. thank god for that it's like you're looking for a million there's somebody that's like he got 80. so you definitely got to see the value in where you at and just how far I, you come. i know a lot of people with eighty thousand subscribers that are doing way better than people with five million mm. But we'll leave that. No, that's a fact. That's true. Where do you think we go wrong in this space as creators? Um, is it this? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. We shouldn't even be holding these, but we are. What is this? What uh, do you think? Where do you guys go? Where do creators go wrong? They Creators go wrong giving up too quickly. Facts not problem solving, not treating their career like a lawyer or doctor. Um, It's rare you hear a creator reference a a professional that takes a very mapped out career like a doctor, for example. 
doctor has to go to school for eight to ten years before they even have a job. They're in school, broke, busting their ass, figuring out the whole time going, how am I going to pay off half a million dollars in medical debt? They become experts. Then they get to go work. And then people go, but yeah, you don't know what it's like because you make all that money. No, they know what it's like. They went broke figuring out how to get this education so that they could practice their craft. Mm. Why can't creators take that same mentality and go, I'm getting into this and I don't give a shit if it takes me 10 years of not making a dime. I'm going to stick with it for these 10 years. Don't even put a time on it until I get it. Yeah. See, I, I, for me, that is the ingredients that is missing from this industry. It's Instagram, though. And not even okay. Instagram, and I said it thousands of times, it's IG as in instant gratification. Oh, that's dope. Because we want it now. We want the success that we see now. Right? Because we see other people with it. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why we, it's funny, we just having a conversation off camera, oh, me and my guy Jay, yeah. about nowadays you see rappers saying, I'm not a rapper. You see podcasters and interviewers saying, I don't do journalism. It's lazy. In my perspective, you can't say that. In my perspective, it's a lazy way to, to have a shortcut of not doing the work. Yes, I'm a journalist. I have to prepare. I I do my research. Yeah, exactly. I put time into Hell this. Yeah. But it's like nowadays those things are so cliche that they get thrown away, and it's like, nah, I, I, this is just a conversation. It can be both. Yeah, yeah, you're right. People, people feel entitled to what they see other people have. They eliminate the work that had to go into it for that person because they're just seeing the product of the work, mm. and then they say. Well, why can't I get it fast? And this sense of entitlement just overwhelms them. But the reality is, with or without Instagram, no one you see that's crazy successful ha had it happen overnight. It may feel that way or appear that way to the naked eye, but they put in time and effort and work and, and, that's and the truth. that you got to go through it to get it. I gotta you know you. that. If I, I got to ask you this. Go ahead. What about the small creators that's hating on, like myself, right? Yep. I'll be hating on the, because I just learned this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hating. That's hating on the people who are enjoying the fruits of their labor from their prior career. Let's say a Shannon Sharp, even a Joe Button, a, yeah. a Gillian Wallow, a Cameron Mace. You see the smaller creators like, man, you guys had a career before this. It's easy for you. But really, they really just reaping the benefit of the hard work that they already put in. But that even that's bullshit. Like, Shannon Sharp was a football player. That has nothing to do with what he's doing now. I he has to this. get up and put in time, energy, and effort into this new venture he's in. If anything, I have more respect for him now that he had a career in football and could easily disappear and just enjoy his life not mm. doing this. Or at least that's, and that I shouldn't even do that because that's assuming. The, the point is, he's putting in work to do another project that takes effort. Mm -hmm. Joe is putting in the time, day in and day out, works harder than anyone else I know, to make the show the greatest show in the world. So people who, who point the fingers, that's insecurity speaking. Mm. That's not genuine. That's their, their mind taking over going, I'm jealous of what I see. I don't want to put in that work. So I'm going to point at what I think uh, knocks them off their, you know, their rocker. Or what I think was your, like, your benefit. Like, oh, you, you did this. Right, so. Like, oh, you, this is easy for you because you had this before. Like, it couldn't be further from the truth. Mm. And But anything, it shows how special you are. Kind of like what you're saying about uh, Shannon Sharp. The fact that you could come in and do something twice. A lot of people can't do something great once. But the fact that I can come in... And different things. Yeah, I can do a great thing multiple times. Shannon Sharp sat next to Cat Williams. He wasn't sitting next to a football player. And he made an incredible moment. Many of them. Cat wasn't the only one. Mm. He has really special interviews. Yeah. So I look at that and think... Wow, this is a this is a talented man that that has many talents beyond the football field. Mm. I look at Joe, who was 
uh, uh, one of the greater rappers and musicians and look at his careers, plural, that he's had bef- before, during, and after his music career. Mm. That's a special person. That That's nothing to take someone and try to knock them down. You could only hope that you have the the determination and mindset to accomplish the things he has. That's, if anything, I look up to people that, that do things that I haven't. That helps inspire me. Okay, we, we're about to get out of here, man. Um, what, what was the word you said again in a DM? Salacious? So, I said no salacious <laughs> conversation. I just want something small, small, something small, I promise. <laughs> um, with the epidemic of podcasts right now, yes. mm-hmm. do you guys take responsibility of what's going on in the Absolutely. Water? And I'm proud of it. You're proud of it. Absolutely. It's disgusting right now. Mimic is the uh, most in- dearest form of, of flattery. It's it, it's it's nice to see that something that we've helped build and, and put out in the world is something that other people are inspired to try themselves. And um, It's getting out of hand, Ian. Come on, man. No, that bubble's burst. Most m- most of the people who were in it just for shits and giggles have, you know, failed and aren't even doing it anymore. And I'm glad they even tried to begin with. It but showed the our impact. Are, it's bad. It's getting bad. Come on, man. Listen, you don't have to listen. Don't tune in. <laughs> let them let them flounder. It there there is some really crappy stuff out there, but I don't waste my time watching and listening. Mm. I focus on what I'm doing. Um, trying to take over the game I, I, i'm not thinking of of what someone who's not doing it right is doing do you think it's reached its peak up and it's, it's about to go down or? i th- i think the i think the hype behind podcasting is over meaning everyone and their their mother thought that they could make a podcast because there was an easy check behind it mm. once they couldn't find a check all the weekend warriors gave up. <laughs> I mean, it's true. And now you're looking at what's left. Mm-hmm. And what you're going to see is the cream rises to the top. And uh, there are some some new platforms out there that are really special that now need to work hard to maintain their spot and or elevate and... I think there's going to be there's going to be a limited amount of success because in any industry there's a lot of participants but there's only a few that are really great. That's a fact, yeah. So I'm happy to be where we are. I'm also happy to see people that believe in themselves try to put stuff together and win. I don't like listen. And the people who who don't really believe in it, I like to see you fail. Mm. And that's just in anything. That was all, that was as salacious as I, I could get. I just, You're not getting any more out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, brother, for real. Appreciate man. you for having I, me, I man. I thank you for coming. Um, this is we made this thing work, man. We made it work, and I had a good time with you. No, nah, thank you, brother. You're good real. at what you do. I, I I've been watching your stuff, and um, your 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 part of the class of creators that I'm speaking to that deserve to get their stuff valued correctly and you know i i think you're on a good road right now no, I, pre- I i think i we see, i know you take your stuff seriously and it works thank you we need these conversations because it do get scary bro like just being it's honest scary as hell man but the more we can have these conversations the more motivated we can get to say i drop like three four four episodes a week there like you go but Maybe I need to do five now and put one on Patreon, there right? You go. If I can do four, I can do five. You can. But the more we have these conversations, the more it's going to motivate somebody else to do it. You could do it. So, yeah. You could do it. And, and um, it's nice to see people like you having important conversations because I agree with you that if we don't talk about it, everyone just keeps repeating what came before them. And then there's no growth. Like, someone's got to do something outside of the box. Someone's got to do what we're doing so that Everything, everyone's not in, in line doing the same shit. There are other paths. There are other ways to get to that top of the mountain that you see. Mm. And sometimes it's, it's not the way you think. It's not the way you think. It'll surprise you. It's like music, right? I know some, this, I'll leave you with this. I work with a lot of musicians. 
And oftentimes they pick what is the single. This is what I'm telling you the single should be. And then what ends up being the biggest single is a song they didn't mention on the project. It's just what the fans reacted to. And so that same rule applies to the plans you have for your business. It may not be the most obvious uh, path that, that you're picking that's going to help you get to where you're trying to go. But there are alternative paths out there that, that can work even greater than you think. Don't leave me with that. I'm sorry. You, sh- you should be used to this. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. got a couple more questions. Because I said, one, the one great thing about podcasting is like a free um, yeah. consultation. I know, I know, I know. It's like a free consultation. A free what? Consultation. So yeah. let me get my, my, my shit out. Go ahead. What's the what's some advice or what's the best advice you can give me when it comes to starting a network? Like I'm about to I'm I'm creating a network, and it, should I even do that? Is, is it too early for that? What? How many shows do you have now? Me personally? Yeah, just one. Oh no, I have a couple. Me personally, like the like titles of sh- like yeah, styles have, and titles. I have uh, three. Are they all with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you starting a network because you think it'll bring in more money or are you starting a network because you want to help elevate your brand and other people? Yes. Because it was both of them things that you just said. Both. Like the second one. You said two things. Help my brand. Yep. And help other people. Okay. That right there. Okay. That's a good reason. Um, I'll I, tell you why. Okay. Go ahead. It's going to help my brand because I'm able to show, of course, other bigger companies okay. that- it's not just me. Yep. And I have other shows that we can pitch. So instead of me trying to pitch a J Hill podcast, right. I'm pitching a network. Right. Yeah, you're more pitching money. more variation of shows. Exactly. More money, bigger source, and that. But helping other people as well as giving more people uh opportunity to get eyes. Okay. But I also want to help people grow their own YouTube as well. So okay, we good. understand yeah. the, the, the the importance of um resurfacing multi distributing your content, right? Over different places. Exactly. So why not give me the full episode or clips and I help you build yours? Because just because you give me an episode don't That's mean right. that you can't post That's it right. on your YouTube. So I want to help because right. I, I have the knowledge. I've, I've learned these things over the years. That's so right. Th- those are my I think two that's reasons. a great idea. Yeah, that's my two I think reasons. if you're looking to grow your brand and you're looking to help elevate other people with the audience you've built yourself, then a network is a good idea. I will tell you my advice is to go slow. Mm. And only work on projects that you believe in. Only work on shows that you yourself don't feel like you have to sell, but that you would do your, you'd put your own feet into. Mm. Not just because you think other people are going to like it, because you like it. Mm. Because these are all labors of love. It's stressful. It takes a lot of time. Like you know for yourself. Yeah. And this stuff's not easy. And and like. These are not shows. I, I tell people, these aren't podcasts, these aren't shows. These are startup businesses. And businesses, startup businesses take a long time to start making money. You have to put a lot of effort and money in before you see anything out. And so it's it's really important to be mindful of that before you commit to anything. So what I was thinking at first was I want to... A, a show that's already established that not established okay. that already has been recorded, right? Because yeah, I want to see the seriousness in it. Yeah. Do you suggest that way or creating your own show that kind of belongs to you and starting on your on your channel? Um, I I wouldn't suggest one way over the other. I think you have to, like I said, what comes first is you believing in it. So whether it's an established show that you're looking to bring onto your network that's already up and running. Mm-hmm. And you want to work with them or it's uh, a talent or a handful of talent that you want to work with to create an original show. I think either is totally acceptable. It's just about do you believe in it or not? And if you do, whatever you believe in more, that's what I would suggest you go with first. And what about last thing? You can make a network. So because me and Jay, I want to talk about this. Uh about creating a network and a show not necessarily being on your YouTube channel, okay. but it's still being a part of your network. How, like, yeah. how would that even, what would that look like? How did that work? Um, well, you just said it before. What if you have segments on your YouTube or maybe it's not on your YouTube at all. Maybe it's behind a paywall or maybe it lives only on one of your social media platforms. Uh, but then they have their own property too that you build up for them so that fans of this other property know to go here to catch that show. Mm. 
it, everything doesn't have to like that's that's more important is my point is everything doesn't have to be the way we know it to be get creative get creative do change it up a little bit because guess what you Copying an archaic old fucking model that no one cares about anymore isn't going to do you any good anyway. Mm. This is a time when the whole landscape of content television is being reinvented. If anything, my advice is to do the complete opposite of what you see happening from the past. Try some new stuff. It could only it could only help you. I like this. This is good, man. Ian Schwartzman, guys. Mr. J Hill. J Hill, Hill guys. I, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out. That was good.